Hey everyone on the other side of the screen there. I'm Sean McElroy. This is AutoLine Exclusives. Today we're going to be talking about battery technology because joining me today is Mujib Ajaz, the founder and CEO of Our Next Energy, or One for short. And Mujib, I got to thank you for joining me today. Appreciate being with you, Sean. It's good to be here. Yeah, and you and your team have done some amazing stuff recently. Uh, you just had a battery pack of yours put in a Tesla Model S and traveled over 750 miles on a single charge. I mean, that, that's amazing. You got to tell us about that. Well, when we founded the company, we looked at what was the problem worth solving. You think, Thinking about a startup, you, you go after uh, picking a topic that would differentiate your company and the technology that you're going after. And we decided on three goals, uh, simultaneous goals. First, double the range of an electric vehicle. Second, do it without using nickel and cobalt. Third, develop the North American supply chain that will go along with it, including the raw materials and the mining that is necessary for building an energy storage company. So those three goals in mind, we came up with a battery architecture called Gemini. And what Gemini represents is dividing the battery into two purposeful segments. The first is daily driving, where we can use a lithium iron phosphate chemistry for your everyday drive. The second aspect of the battery is for range extension. And we can use a unique purpose-built chemistry that doesn't have to have the same automotive durability that is required on a daily basis that would be called into action when you go into a very long drive. And in that setting up of this dual battery, uh, we've targeted an energy density of 450 watt hours per liter and 300 watt hours per kilogram. The vehicle that we demonstrated, mind you, uh, last December fell short of our um, goals in three ways. Uh, the first is it had a 419 watt hour per liter uh, capability, not 450. So we came short on the energy density volumetrically. Uh, it also still uses nickel cobalt we are eventually trying to eliminate that altogether. And we have experimental cells that are in uh, the works that develop a uh, much higher energy density than previously achieved with manganese type chemistries. And then the third objective was weight. And we were about 35% short on our weight target. So it represented a starting point and we're very proud of it, but it's still a data point. It's our first proof of concept of what Gemini can offer and we're now working on refining that and improving it. Yeah, I know. I mean, you just see a 750 mile range. It's quite shocking, you know, when it, it pops out at you on a headliner. Did you get any sort of feedback from the industry? Did Tesla reach out to you at all after this? Well, we definitely got plenty of feedback. Um, from our uh, first story in the press release, there were over 1,100 stories written about this um, aspect of being able to get to that level of range. And I would say that there are three camps that I've bucketed the responses and uh, most common responses. The first camp is um, a resounding hell yes. We need more range for electric vehicles to make um, uh, electric vehicle your only vehicle and to really overcome the real world obstacles of like trying to deal with weather and terrain and high-speed driving. Uh, we got a lot of very, that's the ma vast majority of feedback is in the category of we, we like this direction and we think that that's good for electric vehicles and adoption. The second bucket is um, why would you need so much range, which comes from a place of probably not really understanding the problem that electric vehicles face in the real world, which is, that you might rate a vehicle at 300 miles, but when you put it in top speed or high speed conditions, or you put it in weather and uh, even average speed conditions on the highway, that number can be deteriorated by up to 50%. And so we think that second bucket is an uninformed, why would you even try to go that far? Because you know the, the real world condition of electric vehicles needs a lot more energy to overcome those obstacles. The third was that why would you carry around so much extra battery when maybe the better answer is let's make the cost of the battery lower. If your battery's capability is that good, then just use less of it and then it should be a lower cost total uh, in the vehicle. And I think that also is not quite following the real world topic 
that consumers are going to be faced with, which is trucks and SUVs losing 40% or 50% of that rated range when they're used in real world conditions. So I think we feel like we've started a conversation at one with this story being repeated so many times that the feedback is really healthy. It's good to have a public debate on what is the right target. And we think the target needs to be much higher for the rated range of an electric car to get it to where it can be adopted by everyone. Yeah, and so much of uh, what drives uh consumer perception of EVs seems to be range right now. You know, range is just a huge, huge deciding factor for what seems like, uh, you know, the people, not the early EV adopters, but the people that are kind of picking up on it now. That's right. The, the 99th percentile of a driver, uh, U.S. driver, uh, is covered under 150 miles. So you're, you know, not dealing with the uh, vast population is going much higher than 150 but the decision to buy an electric car is always the question what's its range and is that vehicle going to get in my way of being able to go where i want to go and we think a five to six hour highway trip 80 85 miles per hour on a highway is a good marker for what people want to be able to achieve which will put you in the category of about 400 miles real world we think that 750 achievement rated range is going to deliver that 400 mile real world range that will then get out of everyone's way and making a car very practical. And Mujib, one of the things you talked about, you know, the questions you're getting from people is, do you need that much battery? And, uh, you know, doing some research about this, it looked like the Gemini battery you used for your test was about 200 kilowatt hours which is significantly bigger than what Tesla is using in that car. I mean, it, it sounds like your, your packaging is very efficient as well. Yeah. So we're using three uh, buckets of technology. The first is our chemistries where we have a daily driver and then an extended range battery. The second is our packing density. By picking chemistries that don't self-oxidize or go into thermal runaway if there um, is, an, is an internal short circuit, that helps you with close packing and creating much higher packaging volume density. One of our battery products has a 76% cell to pack ratio, whereas a common industry norm is around 45% cell to pack. So we have a significantly higher mechanical efficiency beyond just the chemistries that we've uh, developed for the range extender and for the traction battery. The third is around power electronics and having an internal network of DC to DC converters to move the energy from the range extender battery to the primary battery when you need that extended range. And how about like uh, things like cooling and stuff like, was that uh, proprietary to you guys as well? Well, we, on this very specific vehicle, we, um, if you want to think of it as uh, like a C over 10, cause it's like a more than 10 hour test. So we were at such low power levels, because you, when you put that much energy on board, you don't need a lot of power. Uh, to, you know, you're moving the vehicle for such a long period of time that we didn't generate enough heat to need cooling, notwithstanding that we were doing the test in the wintertime as well. Uh, so for that proof of concept uh, battery, we actually did not incorporate a liquid cooling uh, system, which is long term not viable. We would have to have a thermal management strategy. But in the proof of concept, we're trying to stand up a new technology. We're going to take off as much as we can in the very beginning, and then we'll keep refining it. We will bring in thermal management and other factors to make the battery ca fully capable of every market, all temperatures, and all driving conditions. You talked a little bit about mining and stuff like that. Are, are you guys, is your intent to make these cells yourself, or are you working with another provider to, to get them currently? At? Curious, how's that working? We're working with another cell provider right now. We are also working on a plan with partners to establish manufacturing of cells in the US. And so as we think about the responsibility of um, battery companies that are being birthed here in the US right now, is we have to create local supply chain and create local supply chain, create manufacturing capability, and then develop and cultivate those suppliers that can go along with us as we're growing our company. And so as we develop ourselves into a long-term battery uh, maker, 
uh, we think manufacturing the cells here in the U.S. is going to be necessary. So what kind of time frame does that put one on for getting yourself into a vehicle program or, you know, actually having one of your batteries in a vehicle and out on the road? Yeah, so we're launching a battery product that's lithium iron phosphate only by the end of this year. And we have seven customers that we've uh, signed uh, supply agreements with that are taking that battery into the commercial truck and bus market. Um, that set of commercial battery offerings, uh, again, is for a lower energy density LFP only uh, strategy. And then in 2026, we expect to launch our first um, battery product using Gemini's technology with a uh, major OEM. Very cool. So how about future road down beyond that? What, uh, you know, what kinds of things are you looking at now that you can talk about? Yeah, I think uh, Gemini has just got these two batteries um, that are feeding the different purposes, daily driving versus extending the range. We're getting approached by developers of new chemistry technologies that don't meet automotive requirements, but do meet the range extender requirements for Gemini that are better than what we're working on internally. And we like that. We, we want to be a platform that helps the industry evolve to even higher range, higher energy density, lower cost, better materials. And the best way to do that is to create the platform that allows any new chemistry to uh, provide a benefit by extending the range even further than what we started off with. So we kicked off our chemistry development for Gemini using a manganese cathode chemistry that we developed internally because we needed a first mover um, development effort on our own. But I see the longer term roadmap that we will work with partners that have better ideas and be collaborative in the industry to accept new cells, new chemistries in the range extender function. Very interesting. Uh, that's a cool application and uh, definitely something we'll be keeping an eye on for sure. But uh, really just want to thank you for taking the time to give us uh, you know, a little bit of an update on our next energy and what you guys are up to. And uh, man, we'll just uh, keep our eyes out and see what you got coming and look forward to everything. Great talking with you, Sean, and uh, look forward to our uh, meeting again sometime. Yeah, definitely. Take it easy. Take care. Bye.